Hey guys, in this video, we are going to connect our Vue.js application with a RESTful API using Axios. Axios is a promise-based HTTP client that we are going to use in order to get, create, update, and delete tasks from the Vue application. We are going to refactor our tasks module that we created on a previous video to integrate Vuex as part of the Vue.js application. So we are going to replace that local array by making HTTP requests to a RESTful API that I created using Node, Express, Mongoose, and MongoDB. As you may remember, our tasks module is part of our Vuex store and includes actions, mutations, and the state of the application. What we are going to do specifically now is we're going to modify all our actions. And instead of modifying the array locally, we are going to use Axios in order to consume the API, the backend API, in order to get the tasks, update the tasks, add new tasks, and delete tasks. OK, guys, remember to subscribe to the channel. So let's get started. This is the API that we are going to be working with, replacing the local array that we had on our module to manage the tasks. Let's execute some requests. So we have these four operations. We have the get operation to get all the tasks, the post operation or HTTP method to add a new task, the put method to update a task, and the delete method to delete a task. So let's get all the tasks first. We only have one task here. The name of the task is task one. This is the identifier. And if we go to MongoDB, I'm going to refresh. And we can see that the tasks collection contains one document that is the one that we are looking here. So let's make some updates to this. If we go to here to the put method, let's change the completed attribute to true. I'm going to execute this. And as we can see now, we have the completed attribute of the object as true. And if we go back to the MongoDB database, and if we refresh this, we are going to see that the completed attribute of the object is equals to true. OK, and now let's remove this element. Let's copy the identifier. And I'm going to delete the element. Try it out. And I'm going to execute this. We get that 200. So if we go to the MongoDB collection and we refresh this, the document has been removed. OK, and now let's try adding a new element. Let's try this out. I'm going to remove the ID. I'm going to change the name of the task as task2. And I'm going to execute this. And as we can see, we have a new element that we can check by executing the get request. And we get one element that is actually this task with this identifier. And if we go back to the MongoDB database, and if we refresh, we're going to see that we have that document there. OK, now that we know what is the API that we are going to be using? What are the operations that we can do with it? Now that we know that it's actually working, just to give you some more context on the API, I implemented this API by using Node.js, Express, Mongoose, and MongoDB. And now let's move on to our Vue.js application. And let's make some changes there. This is what we have today. We have the tasks module that is part of our Vuex store. We are managing a local array 
to manage the state of the application. And we have our actions that are committing different mutations. And these mutations are just manipulating or changing the state or the array that we define it here. So let's check that this is still working. So we can update tasks, as we can see here in the state. We change the completed attribute to true. We can switch it back to false. And we can delete tasks. We can add new tasks as well. So everything is still working. Now what we are going to do is we are going to replace this array. Actually, I'm going to remove all these elements. I'm going to install the Axios dependency or the Axios library. And we are going to start using that library on all these actions to interact with our API. That is actually the one that we reviewed before. Okay, now let's install Axios by executing npm i axios. Okay, and now I'm going to import that library. Import axios from axios. And I'm going to start using it on the actions of this module. Axios is a promise-based HTTP client. We're going to use a sync for all these methods in our actions because we need to use a wait to use the different Axios operations. So I'm going to do that. Async, async, the same for all these actions. And then let's start by getting the information from the backend. So what I'm going, to, I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a variable or a constant actually, that is gonna be the resource URI. And this is the endpoint of our RESTful API. Let's double check. And yes, this is the base URL. And then we have a slash task as the resource. Okay. So let's first, let's get all the tasks that we created. I'm going to store the response from the API in a response constant. And I'm going to execute the wait. Axios dot get and I'm going to pass the resource URI. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the data property from the response to update the state of the application. This is actually is going to commit the set tasks mutation and it's going to assign the response to this array here. This is the mutation. This is where the assignment is performed. So let's go back to the app, let's refresh it. And let me check the database first. I'm going to refresh and we have two tasks. The first one is completed false and the task two is completed true. So this is correct. I'm going, to I'm going to remove this, but we are removing it locally. So if I refresh this, we should get all these elements again. Okay, let's move on to adding a new task. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to adapt this request to a post request. Remember that in REST, we use these different HTTP methods or HTTP verbs to specify what is the operation that we want to execute on the resource. In this case, we, are, we want to create a new resource. So in order to do that, we need to execute a post request and we're gonna use the resource URI and we're going to pass the task that we want to create on the server. I'm going to pass the response 
that data attribute to commit the mutation and include the new task as part of the local state of the application. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to create task four. And as we can see, we have the task four created. And if we refresh our MongoDB collection, we're going to see that you, we have a new document here that is actually the one that we just created. OK, let's move on to the update task. It's going to be pretty similar to the post, but here we need to use boot. This is the method or the HTTP method that we need to use to update resources. And here we're going to use backticks and we are going to include the resource URI and the identifier of the tasks. So we are going to use dollar sign, curly braces and task, task, that ID. So we need to use backticks for that. And we pass the task that we updated. We are using the response data to update our state. Let's save this. I forgot to add the slash at the end of the URI. So that's why I got an error. So let's see now if we can update our task. And yes, we can update our task and we change the completed attribute to true. We can switch it back to false, as we can see here. So everything works just fine. And let's move on to the remove or the delete operation. It's going to be similar to the update, where we need to pass the URI of the resource and the identifier. And we don't need to pass a task. We just need to pass the identifier and we need to replace the put method by the remove, sorry, the delete method. We're going to save this. And now let's check that we can remove elements. I'm going to remove the task two. And as we can see, we only have two elements, the task one and the task four. Let's remove this one as well. Let's add again a new task let's update and now everything works as expected and if we refresh the mongodb collection we're going to see that we only have three elements the first one is completed the second one is also completed and the th and the third one that is task four is not completed and that's pretty much it.